Hey, good morning everyone. It's Sunday. My name is Yuri and we're gonna live code today again. Something new today. Bom dia to Portugal too. And to Germany and to India. Hey, hey guys. How you doing? So, well, first of all, while everybody's joining for the stream, I'd like to thank everybody who supported me on Patreon because I I've had a biggest support ever on my stream for this month probably and thank you all really appreciate it it's not about the money anyway but still about the attention that you pay to my efforts maybe so yeah let me know if everything is all right you can hear me well see me well and let's get started today it's gonna be Cameroon oh oh you know you're from Cameroon and friends okay so today it's gonna be a svelte stream it's been a long time since i wanted to try svelte svelte i think on the english it's svelte and yeah hey hey welcome to my stream and ukraine as well Dobro <laughs> ranko. all right so it's been a long time since i wanted to try svelte because svelte is look like so promising everybody saying svelte looks promising but no nobody actually does like a lot of projects on it some people start to do the projects on svelte but it's not much yet so i decided i'd give it a try and i thought i would join svelte and 3.js and i tried to do some page transitions like i like i think once i did the this kind of stream in Vue.js so i did Vue.js and I did Vue.js page transitions and then there was some WebGL which connected to the page transition and yeah I decided I'll try this one with Svelte as well and see how it goes and there's recently been an update about Svelte, Svelte, Svelte kit I, I guess it's Svelte kit is being released pretty soon in the coming weeks and I thought I'd try this one as well so let's start with with some Svelte template, I guess, and then I'll do the WebGL part, and then we merge them together. Or maybe I should start start with WebGL. What do you think, guys? WebGL or Svelte first? In the end, it's gonna be both of them anyway, but just the matter of where we start. So Svelte, for, for anybody who doesn't know that yet, Svelte is like Vue.js, React, Angular, and then Svelte.js. But it has, like, um, I think, well, the main principle of Svelte is the developer experience. So it's actually, well, if I, if I understand this right, it's actually kind of um, easier to get in. It, 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 you don't have to write a lot of code. And then you get almost the same stuff as you get in React, uh, like the reactivity. And the, okay, let's start with WebGL. Two guys asking for WebGL. And then I'm going to move to Svelte. And then I'm going to marry them together. All right, so a couple of my supporters in my Discord channel asked me about this effect, uh, like this image transition. And I thought it's pretty simple one, like this one. But on the other hand, it looks pretty cool. And then there's this effect, which also looks pretty cool. And then this. Uh, come on, where's the transition? There should be some kind of transition here. Oh yeah, here is it. Okay, and all of those three effects actually will share the kind of the same principle. So I decided I would explain this principle and then we would merge that one into the gem stack built with the Svelte. Yeah, all right. So then let's do the creative part first. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to call this one like image transition and then I'm going to copy my 3.js template and let's start it with parcel. Uh, let's open everything up. Well, it looks ugly, but it depends on the image as well. I don't know. I, that's that's up to the taste, I think. It's the style of the of the website. 
you can do anything with this kind of effect. Well, once you get the grasp of how it's done, you can actually master all the pixel art, I mean, all the image transition art. So let me move the windows first. So we get some kind of window layout. Actually, I like the idea of this effect. Maybe not the looks, but I like the uh, like the math behind it. All right. So first of all, I have this app JS, and then I need to. Um, this is a 3GS template. This is a 3D part. I don't actually need a 3D. And well, to be honest, I wouldn't. I wouldn't actually need the 3GS in the first place. It's because this could be done with a native WebGL. This could be done with the with, the, with any kind of WebGL framework, especially ones that focused on the full screen image. But because I'm, I'm a fan of 3.js and kind of want to use it anyway to be open to the 3D part as well, I'm going to connect the 3.js part here. So first of all, I need to make the full screen image. So for that, uh, I, will, I will switch to the orthographic camera in my template. I'm going to remove the aspect ratio so the camera sees only one by one square and it outputs it so it doesn't matter the aspect ratio it's going to be always filling my whole screen this is a simple way to do the the full screen image in FreeGS and this is the first part well the second part let's just upload some image I think I, I've had them uh, somewhere here some images And like about block, like just some kind of images. I'm gonna get them. Just two images. I'm gonna get them in the uniforms. It's getting harder and harder to find new stuff for streams because I've had them up over 100 now. So, yeah, about. I still find this one kind of interesting because of its simplicity and how beautiful it is. So, we had two textures and then I could move to the fragment shader. I will declare two uniforms here and then I could just get the image. Let's get to see something. And we see the image. It's obviously distorted because I'm not accounting for the image size in any way. To do that, to do that, there are a couple of ways to do that. The like the simple one, the simplest one and my favorite one is to just have well the same same dimensions for you for every image. We could have different, of course. So it's gonna be this. But it's easier to make them all the same aspect ratio and then I'll go to the FJS and I have this like snippet of code here that just like measures if the height and the width like if the aspect ratio is more or less than the image aspect ratio I mean aspect ratio of the viewport and then just assigns two values I don't really need another two actually I just need like this uh, A1 and A2 values so this is this is it and I just have to put it here. I could have put it on the, on the image lot, but yeah, we're not really making a production ready website at the moment. So now I have this updated kind of UVs. I also have this snippet right here, which says that uh, I'm gonna scale my UV. So I'm gonna move them to center, like normalize the UVs. So they're not between zero and one, but they're between like minus 0.5 and plus 0.5. And this means I, can, I could just multiply them with any value and that would be scaling. And I'm scaling them with my aspect ratio part and then moving them back into the zero, zero 0.1 range. I mean, it's not really zero 0.1 range anymore, but 
yeah, centering them back away, like centering them, mm, making them not normalized again. Mm, what's the right way to say this? Anyway, so we are making the new UVs for scaled image, and then yeah, it's just it just this is just it. So I'm just using this uniform resolution and for anybody who asked me about how to do the aspect ratio part for the image well it's it's just this if you have the image aspect ratio you just measure that if that's more or less than the viewport and then you do this kind of simple formulas because you have to account for both aspect ratios all right so now we have the full image part and now the webgl part well it's going to be complicated we need to have some mm, progress probably have some progress here oh. have some progress and i think i'd like to set this progress on my material progress value this settings um what Cannot set property value value of undefined because I haven't declared the progress uniform probably. And by the way, I just removed the uh, types from the uniforms because we don't need them anymore. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. Yeah, so now we have the progress and I can kind of use that progress. I have it declared here already. So I could just maybe multiply this with progress. And then you get this. So because I have two textures, I can do the i2, t2, and I can do the mix between them. Easy stuff. And then the final. And this is how you do the simple fade in, fade out transition for the images. But then comes the uh, like the real part, like how we would do the actual transition. But that this is actually like what fascinated me in this exact uh, transition is that you actually use the distance between well color. You, you use the distance between colors. So if you just uh, have some kind of uh, dist, is a distance between i1 and i2 both being rgbas actually and we measure it but rgb is just the four dimensional vector after all just four values so you could make a distance between those and you could even visualize that here and it's kind of interesting to see the like distance between images so when the colors are like black and white the distance is the maximum and when they are kind of similar the distance is small so right now we are getting this uh, weird thing, which is kind of an art on itself. So it's merged between two images because it's just the distance between them. But then you could see both of them at the same at the same point. So uh, the main thing about all all of those, like every friggin' single image transition made with GLSL that you have to have something like this you have to have some map of values some function between two-dimensional uv and then the some float value between zero and one like this that we see right now because it's black and white it's zero and one and then once you have this value between zero and one for each of the pixels on your screen you can just make a transition so the like the darker the pixel is the faster it's going to go to the next image transition and well this is how you do this but then you have to use uh, the progress somehow so how do you um, use this black and white map of values to do the image transition well how you do this <laughs> well i think i think you have to make first the uh, another value like not mod but uh for PR, like something between something from the progress and then I could use this uh, dist and then progress so it's going to be either one or zero depending on the progress value and let's visualize this 
so it, if the dist is less than progress it's going to be zero and otherwise it's black this is actually it right you could already see that all those weird kind of things are done exactly with this they might be using a, a different image map they might be using some displacement map maybe noise values but it's that's that's what it is actually so now we have map between 0 and 1 not really between 0 and 1 at the moment and maybe that's because you know why that might be because uh, the distance between two four dimensional vectors is actually not between 0 and 1 because like in the cube the diagonal of the three dimensional cube is actually square root of 3 not square root of 2 and not 1 so maybe i should divide this by square root of 4 which is 2 Finally, I'm using math. So maybe I could use this uh, like here. Maybe it should work. Yeah, I think it's it. We just didn't normalize properly the value. There are some pixels, some last black pixels. And this just means that there are none pixels that have the maximum distance value, like between 0 and 1, because this is the only maximum you could get between 0 point and 1 inside the four dimensional cube. Finally, I'm using four dimensional cubes. How is it called already? Uh, I mean, there's a name for four dimensional cube Tesseract? Is it, is it Tesseract? Something like that. All right, so now we could use, just use this value to do the image transition. So the final image is going to be not this anymore, but it's going to be uh, so we have this PR value. Well, we could actually do this maybe like this. But yeah, we need to set the final. Well, this is kind of it. I think in the original shader they used a, a bit different method. I'm wondering why. Maybe it just adds to some uh, more beautiful, more artistic kind of effect. So let's try to replicate exactly what the formula they used. And because I think it's pretty famous color distance shader which being used on like on different kind of projects on the web and yeah so this is basically where the transition happens and they actually use this let's break it down oh my god i'm so bad at breaking down so instead of uh, the image one they actually use the mix between both of those images, like the i1 and i2, and then uh, the same value, the PR, what's going to be here? I think it just it just makes it more east. Does it even change anything? I'm wondering. And then, mm, yeah, I think it's going to be a1 now. Okay, nothing's working anymore. <laughs> Maybe I too. Yeah. I'm not sure if anything has changed, to be honest. Does it really change anything? Do you guys in the chat see, see some change in that? Uh, I gotta switch that one. All right. So in this uh, dirty kind of look, actually uh, comes from the actual gradients in the JPEG and some artifacts in the JPEG. So you can get this kind of dirty, I don't know, loft. How do you call this? Crunch. This kind of style. And it's pretty awesome. And you can actually use the separate image. Now, right now we're using the difference between those two images, but you could use any kind of image. And not only image, you could use any kind of, I don't know, any kind of uh, math behind it. So instead of Using the distance here, I could just use like this equals uh, 0 0.5. What's going to happen then? Just the static value. So it's going to just switch. But then I could use the, uh, mm, let's use the VUV, something called something with UVs. So I could use something with the UVs and then like X. And you get this. 
So it, this is actually like the the concept of the of all the image transitions is like using some kind of float value which is the function of the I don't know of the UVs or of the time of anything and then you get every single kind of image transition just by you know using another math function and I could do something like uh, let's do this something small multiplied by sine from the new UV multiplied by 10 and let's see what's going to happen and we get this but then if I add time here I'm going to be moving now so I guess you get the point right you, you, could, you could do anything with this kind of approach so once you get it it's everything is possible so I think um, for the WebGL part it's pretty simple yeah I'll be honest with you it's pretty simple considering what we've done recently but that's the point I, I wanted to make a simple image transition that I could use with some Svelte website so now I want to build the Svelte Svelte Gemstack solution so like this static generated website just the HTMLs in the end I want to build it with Svelte I want to use the WebGL image transition between all the pages I wanted to use the Mm. the text like the slide transition for the text for the content of the website this is basically just like if you if you create the website and then you use the barbarjs or uh, highwayjs so for me like this whole stream was not about the react js alternative or the view js alternative it's not about that for me it's about um, picking up the new gemstack solution for myself new default one because well there are some good ones like like for react it's it, it, it's gatsby for uh, for react it's also next.js right they both have the server side rendering but uh, gatsby is more like gemstack and then um, for vue.js it's next which also has the, like generating the static files and then I've tried already the React way, I've tried the Vue.js way, and I wanted to see like how the Svelte holds on to those in terms of I want to just build a static website with animated transitions. That's what I want to do. And this is like 90% of the websites on the awards website actually. But still, let's try that. So if you if you think about Svelte, if you're not familiar with that, so there's there's Svelte dev which is like the the actual component framework cybernetically <laughs> enhanced web apps I actually like the like, like like the whole attitude of Svelte developers so and then there's supper Svelte there which is the like the Nuxt or Next.js um, which has the server-side rendering which is CEO friendly and all this stuff but then recently just a month ago uh, Rich Harris who is the main responsible person for this world and uh, announced that they are going for like I think for one solution so instead of having Svelte and then Supper.js which is kind of separate framework they're going to do the one which is called Svelte Kit and it's pretty similar to Supper it's just like the updated Supper but uh, let's use this one today and there's another reason why I'm using this one and then let's create another folder and call this one uh, Svelte. Oops. Let's now go to the Svelte folder. So this is like developing on Svelte from scratch. Mm. Svelte. And then to to start that, I think you need to uh, do npm npm init Svelte uh, next. So for supper, it's, it, it was different. You have to use the the JIT. Yeah, there's just some static already team already defined template with the webpack or rollup, I think. Yeah, webpack and rollup. And what's different with Svelte Next is that they don't really use the webpack or rollup. They use the snowpack, which is kind kind of called like a futuristic web development. So I have to say that there's this sign. <laughs> which says that we gotta stop at this moment and well 
uh, nobody's gonna help us and so forth like it's all experimental and the stuff so if you want to use it on production you better try it separate at the moment because it's kind of stable but then this one is an experimental thing and um, but well danger is my middle name so we're gonna try this i'm not gonna use test typescript yet so uh once we got the init we got this folder with the static files just some images and then this as source file folder which has some roots already just one to be honest and then the counter so let's let's start let's, let's start it let's do the npm install and see how it works yeah it's pretty fast and then you could do the npm run dev and it's already running uh it's localhost 3000 okay we got it we got some errors probably because it's all experimental we got some state because it's clickable and it works and let's uh let's open it up How do you use the idea of using React? Well, I used React 3.5, bro. I, I like this idea. I think I, I try to use it more. Just that it's too many things I'd like to try. Svelte has been on my list for a year already, I think. And I finally got to it. So we have uh, this now. Gonna do the layout window. Yeah. So going a bit forward, I'd like to say that I really like the experience working with Svelte. <laughs> I think I need to say this now because I'm, until I got some weird errors and everything broke down, so I'm gonna say this now when I'm starting. I think you can click, I think you can track the click by cookies or by the local storage, that's not a problem, but I don't think it's tracked at the moment. What is nice though, like the Rich Harris showed it in his recent video, I'm gonna link that video in the description anyway, because it was like a month ago and it's pretty cool and everything is new and all this stuff. Uh, what's nice that the state is being preserved when the module being replaced, uh, hot module replacement is being uh, realized here. So it's actually working pretty good. So um, let me just get to it. So this is the counter. This is how you build the counter in Svelte. Well, there's some styling obviously. And this is a usual component view of any uh, Svelte component. So it's pretty similar to, I think, to Vue.js. It's closer to Vue.js than to, to, to React.js. So you have JavaScript, which is script. You have the button, which is HTML part. You, you don't wrap it in anything because this is just an HTML. And then you have style. So it's pretty much uh, almost copy-paste uh, solution that could work like 20 years ago because this is just basic style script and HTML. So if, if this JavaScript doesn't use any special Svelte thing, it's just copy paste and it's gonna work. This is how the component looks like. So this is a simple counter component in the Svelte. And it looks pretty simple too. I mean, this is the state, which we don't really declare like anything complicated. Yeah. It's pretty simple. So then you have the roots and let's try to do some roots here. So I'm going to do the about because I already had the, those images like the about, the blog and the stuff. I'm going to just do those pages and then I'm going to create the index swelt. It's going to be the about page. This is gonna be the blog page and what else is the contacts page right boom, boom, boom. yeah let's add some more here 
So right now we have those pages, maybe I could even go to them, like... Yeah, it's actually working right out of the box. It's that easy. So I have a simple uh, website structure now. Now next, what I want to do, I want to put up some styles on those structures and I want to add my canvas back. Before I do that, I wanted to test some uh, transitions for the, uh, like, when you go from one page to the other page. For that, let's just wrap everything in one div. Oh yeah, and well, I'm kind of missing all the styles and the nav, and because right now what I see on each of the pages is just this. Like if I just do the view source, it's just the about page. I don't have anything inside the body. What I want to do, I want to have some kind of layout with my navigation. So let's uh, let's go back here. Let's add some component. Just the simplest kind of component you could imagine. And that's gonna be the index page, I mean, home page. And then about. I mean, it's just about. And then the block. So first I'm gonna try to build like a simple Swelt uh, website, maybe uh, a couple of minutes for that, and then I'm gonna go into the WebGL part. So we have this about blog, and let's add this nav now. So I'm gonna go here, just the same way that I imported the counter. I'm gonna use the counter, and I'm just gonna use this nav component, and well, it's just there. I think it even preserves the state if I remove this one. No, I didn't. It didn't. All right, so I have this nav, which, but it's not cool to move it to every single one of the components. So I think I create the layout swelt. And then uh, layout have to have some kind of slot where all the content would go. And then I have the script. And just the same way that I did it here. I'm going to move my nav component here. So every single page has its nav component now. So now we could navigate the website. It's actually already a single page application at the moment. Just a couple of static pages. And then maybe let's add some content so it looks a bit more kind of a website. So now we have the navigation for the simple static generated website. And then the cool thing, well, first of all, how do we build the static website out of it? If, you, if I just go and if I just go and do the npm run build it actually creates uh, some website but this one is uh, this build is for node.js it's not really the build that you could upload to your Apache server or maybe some random server or maybe just the static barebone server it's actually you need node.js server to run this one and this is where it comes to the interesting part this has its well to config file which states like which uh, adapter we should use. And this adapter is actually like which, uh, what's gonna be the server actually? Like where would we put all our assets, our website after we build it? And there's the static adapter. Let's install it. So I think I gotta, uh, Well, that's yes. I'm going to install a specific version. So I think this is the, one of the last ones working there. Not all of them work <laughs> for me. So now we have the static and then well, let's try to make a build again.
And now we could see that it's actually building all the routes for us. And if we go there to the build folder, yeah, you can actually already see like the, the whole structure. It actually built all the HTMLs for us. So this means you could just upload this website anywhere and it's gonna work. And the HTML is actually pretty clean here. I mean, it couldn't be any cleaner because it's like literally the HTML I, I, I've put in my company. Well, because it's a static website, it might look simple, but still for me, it was kind of um, a bit of a magic because I just, okay, I'm just building the single page. I, I got for free the, the single page part and let's test this out actually, because I have the simple, for me, I still, I need to test everything. I need, I need to, you know, fill this magic with the simplest server. So if I go to the build folder, and there's the simplest server you could run on your Mac OS, like the Python server. There are some others. There are nodes, Node.js server. I just have this one in my, in my snippets. So this one definitely doesn't have any node. It's just this, it's just serving static. So if I just go here, so the website is actually working and I actually get the single page application here. So it's not, uh, even though it's those are static HTMLs generated, I actually got the, uh, like smooth page transitions already. So let's go, what's next, what's next? Should I show you how to you how, how would you use the API for this one? Yeah, let's just use the, let's just try real fast to see how the API would work. So um, for block, I'm gonna generate a couple of pages now and I'm gonna just copy paste a couple of codes from this supper, Svelte uh, template. Who am yeah, here? Oh my god! All right. So there's there was an example of how you would use the uh, API in like the third party CMS. Maybe this could be anything. It's just a JSON request after all. I mean the HTTP request. So if you could go here to the block part, there's some, well, there's index.json, and there's the way how you preload all the assets uh, in Svelte. So let's, let's see the block page. Well, for now, the block page is actually nothing more than the, a couple of uh, paragraphs. So let's go to the block page. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna use the, some of the public APIs, dummy APIs. I'm gonna use this one. Just list some users, whatever. Could be blog posts, this could be users. So I'm gonna request this part and then it sets to the posts. Well, I have to expose the post as a, as a property in Svelte, I think. And the way to do that is actually this. Simple as that. And this means that after I got my uh, request done, got my fetch done, got my promise fulfilled, uh, I will have this posts variable here. And then I could just use it. And well, to use it, you could just do this. So I'm gonna remove this part. I'm gonna copy paste this. Remove, so it's pretty simple. Those templates might look weird to you, but it's just, it's just another way of templating in HTML. This was, was one of the actual ar arguments against Svelte because those templates look kind of custom. They're not JavaScript, they're not HTML, they're something else. Oh yeah, haven't I posted? Uh, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I mistyped, thank you. Too many scripts. Uh, okay, so I have the post. Uh, data I think uh, because uh, this one returns me like page and then there's the data and then they have email and the first name okay let's list the first name here and then I mean this is this should be the ID actually this is a slug and this should be the first name and then maybe an email also so let's see that works for us. It doesn't yet because I'm not I'm not actually running the server probably. Yeah, I just built it and I'm not running it. Let's run it. 
Okay, so here we go, the first error. And we have it because uh, why? So that should help me. Expected. I think I messed up the brackets somewhere. Shouldn't be like that. All right, all right, need to check up the example again. I do each post as post. Okay, yeah, it's, it's right. Each post data, it's because uh, this one is, uh, yeah. Still not right. Oof, oof, oof. What is wrong now? Post is not defined. Yeah. Lots of typos, just lots of typos. So it's actually working right here. If you don't make a lot of typos, it does work for you. <laughs> so it just lists uh, all the stuff from some third party uh, uh, API, right? It, it does that. So if I do the build right now, I just need to check everything myself. If I do the build right now, Okay, not found the block. Oh, because it's looking for the URLs and I have to make the slug part. All right, well, let's just do that. It's not really hard. Uh, Supper has another template here, which is this. I'll just copy paste this whole template. And it's called slug. Swelter. And then I need to make a request here and the request is going to be single user request like this. And then params slug, which is the ID that I'm gonna send there. And then the export same kind of post thing. I'll need this CSS. And then post that returns me also data and then the email. Let's uh, just preview the email. Maybe post data email. It's not HTML already. H1, let's make it a big one. Uh, that should be it. So we're making the request to another user part hope it works for us so now we have to, I mean we need to run the server again yeah so far so good all right something is still wrong cannot read property title of undefined do I have this title is the title oh yeah I'm, I'm I'm still having this weird old part another error what do we have now Undefined. So this is a block one, and I have to make a request for the network here. Hmm. Why do I have this error here? It's again post title. I don't have the title there. I don't have the title. Still something is wrong. As post, no S. There's no S. There was no S. I think it's gotta work for me now. Maybe I forgot to copy paste something, so it's post. <laughs> this wasn't really important part <laughs> for my stream, but I decided I should go with this. Okay. Post data email. So where do we have this error now? 
Let's try it again. So the block works, everything is working. And then so not read property data data of undefined. It's not JSON, I guess. Yeah, it wasn't JSON. Fuck. Yeah, I, I've just copy pasted the request and forgot to replace the last part. And because I'm using the public API, it didn't have the JSON part in it. So right now, yeah, it's working all right. We have this, we could go with the block. And if we just do the generate part now, let's just see what it gets us. To actually save all those block pages from the request. And this is what I like. Like I could actually set the structure in some, some third party CMS and make the generation with the Svelte. This is what I liked about Svelte. This is the point I wanted to make that I could, for me actually, it's maybe important just for me because I, I can use Svelte as a Jamstack solution for myself. All right, and then mm, this is image transitions, this is a run folder, and then build, I would actually have all those saved already, like uh, just request the API. I don't know, maybe for you it's it's easy. But for me, it's just magic that it's going to go forward and save all the uh, request results. All right, next thing. Let's, move, let's make the transitions. Let's make the transitions and then the WebGL. Transition. So there are a couple of uh, basic transitions built in into the Svelte, which you can use. And let's try to import this one. Let's wrap uh, like this. Park in here. Then I'm gonna import the fade. Then I I, I kind of wanna wrap the whole content for this page and content. And then I'm gonna use this transition. And to use this, just transition fade. And let's use the same as was about, and then the contacts. Let's, for example, use those two for the starters. I have this again. There we go, we have it. And then So if I wasn't being stupid <laughs> but by making a mistake, it, it, it's actually pretty easy so far. It's not that complicated. Uh, yeah, I need to start the server. Hello to Moscow too. And now we get this transition. Well, I think you have to set the position absolute because like we already have this transition, but it's not mm, smooth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the layout. And there is a way to set the global styles. And because we're going to be using the, uh, the full page thing anyway, I'm going to set the nav. And then like something like this. I'm not sure if you need to wrap body into this one, but let's do that. Um, Uh, so there we go. We have to use the nav class now. Yeah, I don't know. Just decided to move it to the right layout and then mm, just a bit offset. Oh, thank you. This is a custom made one. A friend of mine made it for me. It's made out of the Kiev manhole just on the streets. All right, so now we have kind of something like the website. 
we're having those transitions except for the home page because yeah but let, let's focus on the about and the contacts page at the moment we have the transitions let's use the javascript transition there is a way to use the custom javascript transitions and this is the way to use it uh, let's just show me so you could just declare the function which at this point is a typewriter function um mm, not here in contacts yeah so instead of using the fate and like default transition for swelter i could use the typewriter like the custom transition and then you could to use it you could just use the in or the transition typewriter and i'm going to use it let's call, we'll call it custom transition custom transition now i'm going to declare it and well when i look at this function so it actually well it, it does some checks whether you could use this uh, transition at all on those functions which i'm going to just remove and then it's pretty simple so we have this node so this transition gets the dom node and then you could just set the duration and you have to return something like this function the t is between zero and one actually like in everything in all the animations it's all, always between zero and one so it just goes between zero and one and type writes something and you could do the fade animation the same way you could do any animation and what i thought well maybe i could do the gsub animation this way let's do the gsub um boom 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 i'm gonna install it And then when I get this note, I could do the timeline with GSUP. And then I could, uh, I don't need this. And then I could do the tail to this note and then the duration. I mean, this is set in milliseconds probably. But for GSAP, I need to set it like this. It's going to be in seconds, and then the duration here is going to be correct one. And then not to, but from. From rotate 90 degrees. So it's pretty simple. And then uh, here, instead of uh, just setting the style so setting some contact i'm gonna do tl progress t because this t runs between zero and one let's by the way check that let's see Yeah, now we got the simplest GSUB transition. And that means actually you could do any kind of transition. And that means that I could do, I could go to the green SOC website. And I could do this bleed charts, for example. Go here. So I could actually do this uh, split text. You could do this with some other functions, of course. It's just that I have uh, GreenSock because they presented it to me, and I'm yeah, I've, I've been very honored to have it as a present. Um, and then as a gift. And then I need to install, right? How do you install it? This was here. Just install the GSUB and then uh, how to use the GSUB split text. You have to split first and then you get the array and then. Come on. JS. So because we have the note already, I'm gonna do this. and then from 
uh, like you get the chars array it's gonna be chars chars all right and then stagger 0 0.1 Let's see what's gonna happen now let's just see we have about yeah, it's actually rotating each of the characters at the same time and then maybe we should also set the opacity 0 and then y 10 yeah and now we have this weird back and forth animation well it's actually a way to set the separately in and out animation but what i'm trying to to, to like get here is that we actually get the barbara.js experience and the highway experience so we have this static single page kind of application website with animation in and out transitions and then let's add the webgl now well this is kind of a simple one but let's add the webgl so i'm going to create the canvas component as well and then i'm going to add it to the layout probably because it's going to be shared between all this stuff I'm doing a simple static website with Swelt and with some WebGL transitions. And I'm going to integrate WebGL into the Swelt now. So the transition happens exactly when the uh, Swelt uh, transition happens. And there's this uh, built in function, built in, I don't know, variable. Swelt default segment. Now, I'm not sure about this name. I don't think it's. Uh, not the default, but the let. I'm not sure this is the right thing to name this variable. But it actually says like on which page we are at right now. And I'm gonna bind bind this. Mm, this segment probably. It's not this, I think it's this is the variable that I'm going to be binding it to the canvas component. All right. So now inside the canvas, which is at the moment just the well, nothing. Minus one. Just so we see it. So yeah, we do see it. And then yeah, so we have the full screen canvas component at the moment. We have this animation happening here, the transition part. I'm gonna remove the console log so it doesn't frustrate me. Yeah, it's nice how it moves just back and forth. Maybe I could just do it like this. So it only runs when we are uh, coming to the page. And then we're getting out and it's gonna be just fade. And then just fades out. Yeah, it's simple as that. And you could do them any, right? Just just up and do anything. All right, all right. Uh, the WebGL animation. Well, first of all, I need to copy images. I need to copy all the images. Let's move it. Not here, here. Let's move all the images to the static folder inside my Svelte. We have them now. So they are now uh, accessible through this slash about JPEG, which is from the root. Next thing I need to, in this canvas component, which is empty at the moment, Let's say I want to have canvas here. Just some canvas. And then I need to have some script. And then, well, there are some lifecycle hooks in Svelte. So once the, once the segment variable updated in layout, 
and this means once we change the i mean change the page once we go from one route to the other i think i could just uh, hook it up here and was name import do just after update from was just swelter and then i could use this after update function here after update hook and then hmm. have to set uh, this variable as well right i have to expose this page which i'm transferring from the layout at the moment like this page variable and then i could use it here i don't know about this weird Autocomplete here. So I kind of want to test it if it works for me. So it's about hello from the canvas root change. So I'm on the page about. So if I go to the contacts now, I have the contacts page. Go to home page, it's undefined, which is good for me still. And then the blog page. So it does work for us. Uh, there's some weird TSS here. All right, so we have the about and the and this one, and this one. It works for us. So then, uh, next thing, next thing. I need to have this canvas as a DOM element, as a, as a reference inside my whole animation. So for this, I'm going to do bind this. Canvas element. And then oh, I have to declare this kind of element, obviously. And then I have to have some on mount hook. On mount. Getting closer. Oh yeah, probably yeah. Oh. <laughs> nice aesthetic. Well, thank you. <laughs> I like how Mr. Doop states in his uh, Twitter description that he's not so creative, not creative developer. I'm not really a creative developer, I don't know. <laughs> Green is all right by me, as long as it works. It's not red. That's a good thing. Okay, on mount, and then we have... Uh, will we have this canvas element there? Yeah, we do have it. So now we could run some initialization of the canvas element right there. So let's move uh, the module here. We could have moved this module like a separately. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, like a module, JavaScript module, but somehow Snowpack didn't build it for me. So I needed to move it inside the component. Well, let's try that. So this is the fragment shader. To avoid all the JLSFI, JLS, JLSLFI mistakes, I'm going to just do this. This inside my component, I don't need this anymore. I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. I think it's ready for copy pasting. I'm gonna right after the those things. I'm gonna just copy paste this stuff. I'm gonna remove this setting progress, and I have to remove the export default. It's gonna be just class sketch. And then again, when I'm running, I'm gonna do this canvas element. Then images and then start so for canvas element i'm gonna use this 
canvas element. So inside the on mount, I'm gonna do the let sketch just I'm gonna do let sketch here. With the lowercase s. And then this canvas element. And then I could use this canvas element inside my sketch when I'm uh, instantiating the WebGL renderer. So I could just use this canvas, canvas, which I have. And hopefully, and there's also some stuff where I add the canvas. Yeah, there are some a bunch of stuff that I need to change as well. Some I, I've added to the DOM here, and I have this this container part and resize part. And then I need to install the three. Getting close. So I guess it's building the dependencies at the moment. And then the about is not defined. What the hell is about? Oh yeah, because I've been using those here. Okay, I'm gonna just set them as null. Set them as null. And I think something is working at the moment. So if I go here, I have my canvas, it's full screen canvas, it's just black because I didn't have any images. This is a good thing. So the next thing I wanted to do, like there might be a better way to do it and I'll be grateful if someone helps me in the comments or in the chat, but that there be black by the way, yeah, now it's black. So now what I want to do, I want to get all of my assets, all of my assets right here. So I have these images. And I have this package load asset. And this load asset, let's get it done. And then images, images. So when I instantiate my sketch, I could just do this. What was the uh, last name? About block contacts index. Uh, okay, index. What I could do now, and this after update is coming soon. I want to preload all the images inside my canvas. Let's open it up. So I'm gonna do. I need to import. I need to import the dependency first. And then load all. Well, actually, just images because I have them already as a variable. Images. And then, and then. And then I should have them I should have them in my application. Let's see. I do. Yeah, I do. So all the images are loaded. Now I have the images because they're already preloaded. And now I could do this. For uh, sets key equals
So we are just converting all the images to the textures. And let's then console log them and let's see what's gonna happen. Key is not defined. Oh the what the heck? What the what the heck? Oh it's gonna be uh, it should be let here, yeah. So right now we converted all the textures to I mean all the images to the textures, so all of those are textures now. So now I have to uh, come up with a method. I'm gonna instantiate all the stuff here. So when the application starts, when the application starts, it's not this, it's in canvas here. So when the application, what the fuck is that? When the application starts, I can also set the default part, which is going to be just the page. So I can load the default image right away. And for that, uh, I'll just go to the last lines of my load method and this material T1 uh, uniforms equals uh, what assets uh, the name was start or if if it's the start is undefined like we are on the home page it's going to be assets index and then uh, i have to set the Yoohoo! We finally see something. This is a WebGL actually. If so you go to the About page, we're actually on the About page, right? If you go to the Contacts page, it doesn't switch, the animation goes, but it doesn't switch. But if I reload, we're gonna see the Contacts image. And if I go to the Home page, if I reload, I don't see anything because error creating WebGL context, but... Okay, let's not go to the Home page. This is... I found the best solution for that. Let's just not go to the Home page. And then on the blog, we also have the blog image. We'll figure out what's wrong with the home page later on. All right, so now we have this, and let's do the change background function. And let's run it uh, only when we are like here. It's going to be sketch change background with a new. Oh, well, let's, let's leave the console log. So it's going to be sketch change background after each segment update. So let's... <laughs> uh, okay. I bet it's something with the undefined uh, variable for the home page, but let's fix it later. Change background. So on change background, we get the... Um, we could do gsub2 for this material uniforms progress and then the duration let's be half a second it's got to be the same as the duration for the swell transitions and then uh, the value I'm gonna change to one but on complete gonna be something else happening here All right, uniform progress. And then um, we have to set the next texture, which is T2, I believe. Was the name T1, T2, yeah. Should have been current and next, honestly. And boom, 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 boom. So this material uniforms. Um, T2 value equals to these assets new page or index again. Nothing is wrong with that index so far, but let's. And I have to have these assets too, so I have to set it these assets equals assets. Boom, boom, boom. We have the assets. 
we have them here so it actually should work right, right now for us I don't need this I don't need this we are almost at the end I don't need this anymore actually remove this the only important part is this change background I think we also need to maybe okay something is wrong which is do not read property uniforms of undefined uh, where is it happening and change background this material change background and this is because I'm running this change background on the start before the component even being initialized so I think I could just go and check if if I have this component so if if sketch sets Okay, it's almost there. Something is still wrong. GSAP is not defined. Okay. Well, now it's green. Okay, let's... Fingers crossed. Yay, we got this transition. It, it's not smooth because, because of the incomplete function. So in the end, after the, after the transition, I have to just bring the whole animation back again progress value equals uh, zero again and then mm, let's save this one to the variable and then this material forms t1 yeah it's working now only if we don't go to it's it's working why the why the heck it's working on the home page now i think i had the same typo maybe or whatever. so maybe let's change it to back to the original animation that i wanted to do in the first place and not this simplistic explanatory version so it's here and instead of uh, all right in the dist i'm gonna just command this one I think it's pretty fast for this one, right? So let's make it two seconds. So because, well, the website looks... <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure even the uh, ugly is even the right word for this one, but... What the hell? We are all developers, right? We know that we could make it look cool, but the tech behind this one is this is what makes it important. So. Well, of course, yeah, we have, we have to make transitions safe because if we click during the animation, it just cuts it. But yeah, we just made a single page application and the roots being changed. This is the most important part. Like this is actually the static web page and let's uh, try to build it. npm run build and let's try to build it and run it in some static web server and see how it handles all those webgl transitions for us i promised to eat peaches but i forgot okay build me something Let's start a server. Let's go and we see the web page. The counter still works. And we go to the about page and we got those transitions. And this is all just a bunch of HTMLs, you know? And we have the single page application with a bunch of HTMLs and with a WebGL and even some of the GSUB transitions, which are hard to see. <laughs> I think um, in the layout, I'm gonna just set the color.
Alright. Uh, this will not change the, the build anyway, but still. And we got this awesome website. That's definitely not the website for people with any color differences in perceptions. Any percep any color, uh, you know what I mean? Because it's hard to see anything here. But it's still a bunch of smooth WebGL transitions, and there's even the context page transitions. Hard to see it, <laughs> but it's there. The G sub transition that we just made. Oh, thank you, thank you for believing in, in my design skills. Anyway, I hope you get the idea. Like for me, it was. Uh, the, the, the best thing was to try if I could just build this simple, not the beautiful, obviously, but the simple website that's being statically generated with server side rendering with some third party API and then the WebGL, well, not under one hour, but still we kind of close. I hope you learned something from this <laughs> because I did. <laughs> because I did. And actually, well, I have some, some really simple ideas for my projects that I want to do, like simple startup kind of thing helpful projects and once i tried the react in view and then swelter i think it's um I'm, i'd like to do this one in swelter though the ones that they want to do I'll, i'd like to try swelter on those because it looks so simple it's so close to the like the html that i remember not the jsx not the css in js it's just like how oh, I remember I've been writing HTML and CSS for all my life. Yeah. So thank you guys for being today with me. Hope you like this one. It's been a simple web jail and a lot of struggling. Not that struggling. But just a lot of interesting stuff from Svelte, I believe. Hope you learned something. So let me know what would you like me to show on the streams, maybe on the next one. I will probably share all the code with my Patreons from this stream so they find it useful. And then, yeah, I'll be seeing you on next Sundays. Is there a reason to choose free over any? No, there is no, no reason. The only reason is because I like 3GS and because I had this template and it was quite easy to convert this one to. I think you could as well use the curtain JS or any any kind of uh, two-dimensional WebGL renderer. I think it's a bit harder with Pixie to use custom shaders in Pixie because they've been changing that part in, in 3, 4, and 5th version and I've been a bit struggling with it. There are some kind of weird names for me, like not the UVs, but texture coordinates, which is kind of the same, but still I'm used to UVs. Yeah. Anyhow. Anyhow, if you have some stuff that you'd like to see on the stream, just let me know. I'm all for doing the useful stuff for you. If you like that, you can press like and just comment this thing. I, that's really makes me, that really makes me happy when people comment and give me the feedback. Uh, and then, well, GG's. Have fun on this Sunday. I'd go try to have mine, maybe, and relax a bit. So guys, see you on the next Sunday. And I'll be sticking in chat for a while and then see you in the comments and Twitter. <laughs>